Welcome to Anecdotes for Success with Matt and Paul. Storytelling is an art form, emphasizing the value and learning that is created through personal experience. Our purpose is to share these stories and experiences with the listener. Everyone has a powerful testimony. Let's use them to level up to our best life with truth, meaning, trade-offs, and perspective. Big shout out to Isaac Mather for the new podcast intro. You can check Isaac's music out on all socials or directly at IsaacMatherMusic.com. So you were saying? I was just saying what a great opportunity and lesson for for the students, you know, if if they ever got involved in um, an opportunity. And it is an opportunity in my mind to do the thing that most everyone hates more than anything else. It's probably like, uh, what they say public speaking is the biggest fear humans have followed by death and i think the third one would be cold calling because of the 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 rejection that you get and you know you're putting yourself out there and becoming vulnerable and but it is such a great experience and 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 if you can figure it out and, and get through like understand that it's not personal it's not you and overcome that fear what a great thing to have well so I don't know how I do it in class yet, but whatever students run it, uh, I, my students, for people listening, my students might have the opportunity to run the back end of a business. They have to pay fuel costs, payroll for the driver, uh, the loan back, because, of course, you would use other people's money, right, to buy purchase the business. I would think he, I would think he would if that was what, yeah. Some, I would. Miscellane would some miscellaneous costs, and then... The goal is they'd work for free unless they make money. If they make money, then we develop a plan. Some of because it's a school project, some of it would go to our class and then some of it would go to them. But I don't think that's like slave labor because in the real world you'd actually lose money if you didn't make money. You just wouldn't not get any money. Right. Well, well, or you could not do it. You could sit in class and stare at a PowerPoint all day long, or or you could go, you know, I don't know, do any of the number of other things that happen in classrooms many of which are great right. many of which are right so my day to day of course my students always have you right yep. as a mentor i don't mean that as just because you know you're super valuable uh i got off the phone call i got off the phone today with a gentleman i'm meeting with next week that wasn't even calling for that purpose but when i explained my class i have some students that are going to do marketing stuff for them in the future and now i have this other business opportunity that we might actually run the business in class. And that's not to mention all the speakers we want to bring in this year. And it's only day five of the school year. I don't wow. know. If I'm I, I need a vacation. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Hey, Paul, you know, I think about it, like what your class was when I came in the first year, you know what I mean? Which, yeah. which was different. It's very different. It was cool then. I mean, I was immediately like, inspired by it like oh this is different this isn't the normal classroom you know that's what hooked me back then to really want to get involved <clears throat> and you know just interacting with the kid, the students and seeing you know how enthusiastic they can be when you actually present them with something that's not just droning on blah, you know reading blah 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 blah, blah you know that and, and, which isn't what you're doing by any means but what i think about is so many class classrooms and and that was advanced then where you are now i mean i just because i've been along for the ride i've had the, the you know the pleasure of being along for the ride way in the back seat but at least i'm you know i'm on the bus a little bit i can kind of see and hear and catch a lot of things and to see you know where it was which was a lot of theory even then i know you were getting kids out there and, and that but you know versus the just the real world experiences you have them doing no, I was I can't even say year in and year out because it's not the same. It's like every year it's more and, and more relationships and, 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 you know, just different things. I mean, I think about Cam. Cam's like, you know, Cam was a guy that we just knew of on Twitter. And now he's like a friend. And he's, yeah. a, you know, and he's a he's a guy, you know, I just sent him a text a day or two ago about something I saw he posted that I, I thought he absolutely nailed. I just shot him a quick text. Um, but the point is like 
what it what it was, which was already ahead of everything else, in my opinion, to what it is now is is night and day. And, and what a you know, it's a compliment to you, of course, but what a great ride you've been on. Well, it's amazing when, uh, like, contrary to what a lot of society thinks, if you give an educator the flexibility and the freedom, they're not going to sit and show movies all the time, right? I mean, sure. and yeah. speaking of Cam, uh, every time we Zoom together, he asked me if they fired me yet because he's hoping I get fired because <laughs> he, he, he thinks I would be much more valuable traveling the country implementing this program everywhere. And he tells me I'm too comfortable, and he's correct. That's that's funny. I love that he says that. I love that. Yeah. yeah. And I love Paul. I love I love that you look at that and go, maybe he's right, because I've had that happen to me, too. Yeah. I've shared the story about my daughter saying and and it's yeah. it's 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 he's not insulting you, as you well know. Uh, he's saying, Paul, you got a lot more to give than you probably even know. And that's about the biggest one of the biggest compliments someone can give you. And I don't want to say someday, but I really enjoy what I do now so yeah. but but the being comfortable part hits home uh that's why yeah. I coach more that's why I've amped up my financial business I mean you just you he's right I'm comfortable so you try I, I don't want to do it his way necessarily with I uh, which I could someday but I'm just going to amp up how uncomfortable I need to be in certain things and that's a good thing in life right what's what's the other alternative yeah no I I agree and and to to some degree, I have to agree with you in the sense it's like, like you can always you can only do so much too, right? There's only you know, and and there's still a reality out there that I believe in too, Paul. That I think is really important. That you're only you're going to get the most out of the areas you spend your time in, like the most of your time. So you know, you start to you start to spread too thin, and man, I'm guilty of that. Uh, everything can suffer or things that, that things yeah. that you thought were kind of on autopilot begin to suffer. I've done that dozens of times, probably. I still fight that urge because I want to do more, want to be involved in more, but then, you know, the things that maybe what I, you know, I call keep the machine running the machines, like, you know, the income for our lives that allows us to live the way we do. You got to make sure you're taking care of the machine first and foremost. And, and, um, you know, for you, the machines like, you know, your career and, your, you know, and, and what you're doing, you know, and 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 it's you got to you still got to keep an eye on the ball, too. And but, you know, all while you're trying to maybe push yourself. That's a, hey, that's the fun of it, Paul. That's the challenge of it all. Right. Yeah. You know, I was telling the kids you side your house so you don't have to paint it. Right. Yep. And it makes life easier. But every now and then you still have to power wash it. And sometimes when when you keep the machine running, it still needs a little maintenance once in a while. And it it, it really if does. You leave I mean, something, if you leave something unattended for too long, let, let's just say you got to revisit it sometimes. And that's that's a hard balancing act, right? It, it, it really it really is. And but the know what the beautiful part about it is, Paul. It's like the 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 machine. Uh, the, the the whatever that system is it'll tell you it's out of whack right yeah it you yeah. know you, you're you're gonna you're gonna realize it one way or another maybe you're getting you know in my world i get you know com i get my employees don't stick around as long or i get customer complaints or sales go down or whatever in your world you might get complaints from your you know your 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 students or their grades go down or 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 your 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 other teachers you work with say hey paul we missed you at this or you know we wish you would have been, but I don't know how your world works, but you know, you get my point. I get your point. So I have a word for us and, and we kind of been talking about it a little bit before then. So this is episode 90. It's hard to believe. It's awesome, uh, man. It's so and, awesome. And it's to the point now, I mean, we, we couldn't get our, our uh, guest on this week because we've got a lot of things going on. But we're booked. And it's so fun now because they're like, well, how about next week? I'm like, well, we're booked till October 10th or whatever, but I can have you come on then. And everybody's like, wow, you guys are keeping busy. And it's funny. My biggest concern when we started this, I think our first four or five episodes were just us talking. And then like, well, we got to get somebody on soon. And our first guest <laughs> was Isaac Mather, who actually was supposed to be coming back on this week. 
Well, There's he's no a star sh- now, Paul. He doesn't, he doesn't I know. He's the next time he now. comes on, I'll have to go through a middleman probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll talk to his agent. We're going to have to make sure he's got, you know, Skittles and, 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 and you know, and soda and or whatever, you know, whatever. whatever. Like, we're going to have to do a whole a whole thing for him now. <laughs> but, but it's so funny. All we've done is just consistently – put up stacked episodes and that's what i want to talk about consistency but not just consistency but consistency and action okay okay and it uh, i'm going to use this analogy quick i use it with all my sports teams i did a a, a junior softball camp this summer and i handed all the girls out yo-yos afterwards i don't know if i ever told you that story Mm. it's not i'm developing the yo-yo mindset like ups and downs happen ups and downs happen but the the downs with a yo-yo are short lived because as soon as you see it going down, you recognize it and you take preemptive action to bring it back up. I love it. And o- love over it. time, you get used to those downs and you just you get good and good and you can do tricks with the yo-yo and and the ups go all over the place. Now, if you keep moving forward during that process, I always use a flight of stairs like the journey of life to get better. By the time you're on that top stair you laugh at the da- your early ups for the yo-yo you laugh at because now your downs are even way higher than your your ups. And you're, you're, yes, yes, your downs are higher than your initial ups, right? Yeah. So be, because you're always, you know they're going to happen. It's part of life, but you're better, you're better at not preventing them, but uh, how long they last. Or, you know, the first time the yo-yo goes down, you might, oh, it's down on the bottom. What do I do? And you got to take time out of your day and wind the thing back. Up. But yeah. Now you just give it a little tug and correct the action and away you go. And, and I think the only way you can succeed is through consistency and action by being a yo-yo. Yeah. No, it's a great analogy. It, it, it really is. It hits home. It's, it's, uh, it's true in, in terms of, in so many cases, is if you're consistent and you're practicing and you're performing and you're paying attention, you can make those, uh, you can correct those downs. But I lo- what I really like at is the, the get- beginning, Paul, the downs are going to be worse and they're going to, it's going to be harder and you're going to be winding that yo-yo and restarting again. And when you're using a yo-yo, it's like, yeah, this is normal. Of course I have to do it. I have to practice. Well, why don't we look at life like that in, in, in all these other ways? You know, I was talking to someone recently and they're, tried to they got got into some real estate and they had a bad experience and like well i'm just no good at it so I, i'm not doing it anymore i'm like my gosh you're not good. like if if the attitude is to stop doing everything you weren't good at the first time like i don't know what i don't know what you, you know what you'd be what you'd be doing and and the yo-yo is just a great real world analogy of that and just like business just like teaching just like anything in life just like nursing whatever you know the day the that first day week month year those downs are low and those highs aren't that high but you get you know you keep putting one foot foot in front of the other taking action and it's a whole different world and that why is that mindset so difficult for a lot of people it, you know i mean I'm, I, I'm asking you well I mean, here's why i i'm not any type of counselor but we're built we're built for we're built for the yo-yo way. You give a anything that happens to a young child, they cry and you can divert their tension and correct it real quick and then they just keep trying, right? Mm-hmm. Uh if if we try taking a, a step and fall down as a little kid, we just get back up and keep going. We just get matter of fact, I feel it motivates most young kids to want to try harder because they realize all they can reach and get into once they yeah, start moving sure. around. Somehow I think we become educated that it's okay to give up. And maybe that's the school system. Maybe that's parenting. Maybe that's the environment. Maybe that, I, I don't know what yeah. influence happens because, because some people that doesn't happen to, but I think we're built to understand there's downs in lives and, and ups in lives and you got to keep going. But somewhere along the line, we're told it's okay to, to give up. I don't know. Yeah, no, it's yeah, true. It's it's true. I, I, I think about, you know, when I was a kid, my parents, uh, I'll use me, my, my, my saxophone, playing the saxophone in like fifth grade experience. I was, I was awful. I mean, awful is not even the right word, but, but my teacher, and I won't mention her name because I'm sure she didn't 
me she didn't right. mean for me to be talking about this 35 years later or whatever it is but she told my parents he this isn't for him he you know I mean? god love her for doing that because it wasn't and and i don't blame her but what my parents said was well he's gonna finish though like we don't quit halfway in in my family you know we this is how uh, not how i was raised and, and i know i'm not unique in that i am unique but i'm not the only one there's far too many people who are told hey if you don't like it quit stop paul i got employees who you know quitting is is just part of part of part of their vocabulary and and the inability to handle anything of of any kind of you know somehow far too many people have had it drilled in their head if it's hard then it's wrong and then you got to just quit and go on to something that's not hard and as you said i don't know where that comes from I think a lot of it's parenting, to be honest with you. Um, and I, I think a lot of it is this idea that we're always comparing ourselves to other people. We're always saying, well, I'm not as good as he is or she is. And therefore, oh, I got to go find, I got to go do something else. It's this comparison with others, I think might be part of it. And it's it's a that's a major trap for people. And I know it's hard because we're all inherently competing biologically we're competing right we're, we're competing against other humans all the time right. biologically but there's got to be a separation you've got to understand that you've got to compete with yourself and be better and you hear it and i'm not the first to say it and i won't be the last because it's true though you've got to be you've got to understand the co competitions with yourself and quitting is the worst thing you can do and i don't care if it's a saxophone in fifth grade those kinds of things impacted my life to a degree, Paul, that that I, I'm not capable of quitting. Um, you know, I, I mean, I, I'm going to carry it on to the end. And if I fail, I fail, which I do. And I certainly did with the saxophone. Um, but I that crossing the finish line, even if I'm eight miles behind everyone else, is still crossing the finish line. Right. And maybe I don't have to start the saxophone race again. And, and I haven't. But 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 those things those things matter, and I think they need to be taught at a very young age. Yeah, uh, quitting is different than finishing, right? You can finish and still be bad at something, and decide to move on, pivot, whatever term we You're want gonna. to use. That's but, healthy. That's healthy. But you learn a lot of lessons by finishing, you know, and and then you you talked about. You know, employees quitting. I think when things get hard, people don't understand the answer is not quitting because sometimes things are hard and they're not complicated. They're just hard. Like, just keep hard. doing it. Keep, keep doing it. It's not like I'm trying to build a cell phone from scratch. Now, that's that's hard and complicated. I'm going to quit. Right. But getting up and exercising or just showing up to work on time that might be hard for you but it's not complicated and it will actually get easier if you finish whatever what a, your finish line is what a great point what a great point that it really is that is the heart of this discussion i think it's like there's there's difficult or hard and there's complicated complex like like you said i'm not creating the new cell phone or splitting the atom <laughs> It's not going to happen. I'm going to have to stop because I won't get there in, in something that complicated. But we're talking about the 99.9% .9 of other things in life that are just habitual. Get up, do it. Don't stop, into, you know, because it's it's just it takes some time. It takes repetition, it, you know, and, and before you know it, they, they become habits are much easier and your life's much better because of them. So yeah. I'm glad you defined it that way. And because definitions are important, that is that is definitely a, the difference. So uh, that, yeah. like I said, that's the heart of it to me. You know, back to the yo-yo. If you give a, a kid a yo-yo for the first time, say, here you go. They're going to hold it. It's going to fall to the bottom and they'll start sure. crying. Like, what do I do? All sure. right. And then they're going to try it. and It's going to go halfway and down, halfway and down. And as long as they don't finish, they're going to start figuring out when it gets hard. And it's speeding down at the bottom. Not that it's like the speed of sound, but you start yeah. learning how to control it and control it. And then that gets easier and easier and easier to the point where you watch. I went down this spiral the other day and was watching people on YouTube with yo-yo tricks. It's it's just what I do sometimes. Crazy. <laughs> uh, they're doing so many things. The simple up and down isn't even hard to them. 
So what well, their definition of hard, because they consistently kept taking action and practicing, it's not even our definition. So if something's hard for you, you got to take a strong look like, is it is it complicated hard or just hard because I'm not taking action? Big difference. Yeah. Well, Paul, what's what's an example in your life of, of, of something like that? And I'm just trying to think one off the top of my head as well. So I thought I'd put you on the spot first. Like, is there something that comes to mind for you that you like, you know, fits that category? Well, I mean, when I went back over COVID and got securities licensed, it wasn't hard. The tests were just eight months of consistent studying and studying and studying and studying. Every single morning, it became part of my day. The hard was making sure I found time every day. Does that make sense at first? But over time, doesn't matter. Traveling, 15 minutes of studying. This, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Now, some days it's more. But the fact that I never went a day without at least looking at something for 15 minutes, eight months goes by. Eight months is going to pass in my life either way, right? Either way. And in those eight months, I figured that out and didn't even know what I was going to do with it at the time. I mostly did it just so the kids would pay attention to me more in class because I could throw a title at, you know. Yeah, you you had that earned credibility, right? And, you you know, just consistent action. Like I was just telling the student, here's another example. This year in New Visions, every other Monday, we rotate classes. So I had the health kids yesterday. My kids went to human services, human services. Oh, really? the health. And all I do is all things finance and things. So instead of having 45 kids in one classroom, you've been there. It's just the 12 kids. And I told them, listen, you're going to be 41 someday. I mean, I can't guarantee you'll live that long. Like I wasn't trying to get dark with them, but you're right. going to be or you're going to be 48 someday. So you're 18. So in the next 30 years, what can you do to become a millionaire? And they just look at me and I showed them, you take a thousand dollars of your graduation money and then you throw in like $350 a month for the next 30 years. And when you're 48, you'll be a millionaire. You know what happens if you do none of this? You're going to be 48 anyways. Right, right. And and th- the reason I go through all that is time's going to pass. Like you can't stand school right now and you've only been in school 12 years. Now have your dream job for 12 years. You're probably going to be sick of that too. Yeah. So if you're not, if you're not always correcting like my yo-yo mindset, yeah. I'm not trying to make it sound like it's some crazy mindset. If you're not always correcting and looking ahead, you're going to be there. And so you might as well have choices when you get there. Right. Yeah. And when you quit and you're not consistent, you never have choices. Very true. And, and and I love what you say about the time passing anyway. My mom always says that to me, said it to me before. She goes, Matt, you can do it or not do it, you know, whatever it happens to be. But the time's still going to pass. And you're going to look back and go, oh, my gosh, I'm 48. Now, do I have anything to show for that or not, right? And right. and. And uh, meaning whether it's your financial s- situation, your education, your family, your family yeah. exactly what you do in your community, whatever, whatever is a priority to you, whatever priority happens to be for you. But it's go- it's coming anyway. And, um, you know, m- having my mom in my ear on that always uh, has allowed me. I don't I tr- like I'm very good at living in the future. Like, I know this is coming. Right. What do I what seed do I plant today? to be taken care of in the future. And, and that's why I've been, that's why I have a lot, that's why I have the education levels I have, because I knew, well, it's coming anyway, I might as well, and that's why I have some of the investments and the other things I have. But to be fair, there's a downside to that. And sometimes it's, it's, it's a, it's a, you know, you make your present a little more difficult and, and, I, and you can, you can give some things up because of that, right? Like there's a trade-off and, and, and I, I, I don't get to, avoid that any more than you do or, or anyone else does but that future is coming and i love that message to those kids 30 years is coming anyway and if you do nothing else other than this thousand dollars and this 350 a month you're you know you're gonna you're gonna have a million dollars at 48 if that's all you did right. i assume they'll do more imagine imagine what 48 to 78 looks like or imagine what you know retirement looks like when you're setting yourself up that way well, and I've learned kids that are 18 don't want to hear about retirement. They haven't even started working. And when you're 18, it should be one of the most selfish times of your life because there's a lot of things happening. 
right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I get that. We don't get into how to save that money. I mean, yeah, you know, whether it's real estate investment trust, mutual funds, uh, indexes, you know, professionals that you use, retirement plans, that, that's going to happen over time. I also tell them, start with $10 a month because as you... It, right. You've right. taken you've taken the action. Now climb those steps, ten more dollars each year, and and you'll start realizing, wow, I'm going to keep it. It becomes a habit, and that, that's a whole other topic of discussion. And consistency, consistency in action can yield habits. I mean, it could be bad habits too. If you if you drink a twelve pack of beer every day, well, that that that's consistency in action, but that's going to take you down another avenue. So and, and it doesn't that's what mean as well. Yeah. So, but I'm learning with kids. I get through them the best when I say, you're going to be that age. Do you want choices or do you want to have that $250,000 a year job, but your bills are 248,000, but you have a yeah. nice car and a nice house, but you can't quit your job or do anything different in life because you don't have any reserves. You don't have any other things you yeah. can do. So just, just keep your eyes open, keep working. Keep finding ways to have choices. Agreed. Agreed. I I, uh, I I think at the end of the day, choices, putting yourself in a position to have good choices is ultimately what your life's going to become. And isn't that, I mean, choices are freedom. I mean, having financial security, of course, is freedom because you, but, but it's because you have choice. It's not <laughs> technically because you have the money. I mean, even though it is because you have the money. You, well, you know what like, I mean? Though? Yeah, it's like action and discipline, right? Good taking the right actions in a disciplined manner, right? Not not just one action, not just once every 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 few months, but disciplined action on a regular basis will lead to good choices. Good, th those choices will lead to opportunities. And, and freedom and and the ability to do the things you want to do but it all starts with discipline and action right it's it's like yeah. it's 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 like in order to be free in order to have this financial freedom let's say in order to have these this freedom i you know i or these choices i need to be very disciplined it's like almost different sides of the spectrum how does discipline and and act or freedom how are they related well, you need the discipline every day, every day. Do the, do these these things every day. And if you do that, you're going to turn around. It's going to be in the future. And it's going to take some time. And all of a sudden, you're going to have all these opportunities. You're going to be free to have all these other choices in your life because for so much time, you've been disciplined in your action. Right? I mean, yeah, that's how well, I see it. Well, I mean, yo-yo is one way to look at it. Yin and yang is another way to look at it. Ebb and flow is another way to look at it. You can't, without the perspective of knowing the opposite side of it, you can't have what you're looking for. Is that right? That's what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's there's definitely two sides to every coin, and there's every. It, it, go ahead, go ahead. No discipline to freedom. I mean, it's yeah, right. they're, they're two complete. You you can't they're, appreciate they're it. Yes. And th that journey of knowing that, being aware of that's where happiness comes from, right? Not, not in, going somewhere. In, in in comfort, right? I would say, yeah. I would say, you know, to me, it's like if I'm 18, or I could get through someone, to, through to someone who's 18. I'm going. If you simply do this, simply do this, and this is so. I'm sorry. I think it's simple to do. There's no reason you can't earn. You know. I mean, assuming you're able-bodied and, you know, and I'm making all those obvious assumptions for, for, for people. And, and, but to put a, put away a, a bit of amount of money, um, consistently over time, I, I think that helps you sleep at night because I know for me, Paul, I'm, I'm, and I've been this way my whole life. I'm constantly thinking, how am I going to take care of my loved ones someday? Forget myself. I got to take care right. of myself too. But how do I take care of the other people in my life that I care about? You know, whether it's my, 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 my wife, my daughters, my whatever case may be, it's a major responsibility. For me, that means I don't get to sleep in. 
I don't get to not go into work. I don't get to avoid these responsibilities. I have to attack those responsibilities because I've got many people to look out for and make sure that they're taken care of. I, I don't I don't get to make those other choices. So that's that's I, I'm living I'm living 20 years from now, 30 years from now. What's my daughter going to have access to? What's my wife? What position is she going to be into? Or in, in going to have? What? Forget about myself. I mean, right. I'm last on the list, Paul. You know, and I, I'm I'm way at the bottom. It's like I got to take care of these other people. I can't. I can't just not show up for work. I can't just accept. You know, oh, I'm making this. I, you know, I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to retire. Like I, I can't. I, my mind doesn't work that way. Well, as we wrap it up, we started before we even talked about a topic, talked about being comfortable, being complacent, uh, how to keep, I don't want to say how to keep busy, but how to keep challenging yourself. Busy, Produ productive. sometimes, sometimes busy. I mean, I mean, productive. I yeah, mean, yeah. yeah. Busy and productive are not the same thing. And let's, yeah. let's make sure everyone understands that you want to focus on productivity and Hey, if you can work 10 hours a week and produce, you know, a hundred hours a week worth of normal, you know, that's what technology does. Right. And that, I mean, it's about productivity, not, not time spent, you know, nothing drives me crazier. And I know we got to wrap up then, then when people go, yeah, but I work a lot. Or I, I, you know, I'm like, how productive are you? That's all that matters. Don't, don't talk to me about time. Now yep. time can lead to productivity. And, and I'm not saying but that's a different conversation, but it's about productivity, not, not time and not effort. Like you can be the Absolutely. best ditch, ditch digger in the world. Nobody needs a ditch dog. Who cares? <laughs> so at the end of the day, the, we, we talk about all the time, just keep taking action, keep taking action. And on another note, I think now we need a merch store. We can have anecdotes for success. Yo-yos. Oh, yo -yos. We can have little sayings, you know, little it, shirts with little, little, little sayings. Um, boy, I think that's a great idea. Don't we get me do wrong. Yo Paul, we don't should get, be. Well, don't get me wrong. Winters are long up here, so there's a lot of mornings where it's <laughs> too cold to be outside. So I'm out there less time, so I'll be creating. So, hey, this is great. We have another awesome guest next week, a repeat guest. And it's one of yeah, our most yeah. watched episodes ever, so it's going to be a blast. But I, I can't tell people why. So in the meantime, subscribe and go back to all our past episodes and guess which one it is. There's only 89 of them, so you can do it before next week. <laughs> and and don't forget, right? Like like you said, don't don't forget to subscribe. We we we've, we've done a poor job of, of promoting that, and we're, we're we've got to change our our attitude on that. We really do. Spotify, Apple, and YouTube. Hey Matt, until next time, we'll chat. All right, All right man. Thank you. Yep. Bye.